Hi. Hello. What's his name? Tyson. Look. Hello. Wow. Amazing. Do you see that? Hello. This is Dino Dustin. Here's one of your guys to Jurassic Quest Drive Through Safari. Before we can go in, we should go over a few rules. Please keep your hands, feet, heads, children, and other appendages inside your vehicles at all times. What you're looking at is the Triassic period. The Triassic started about 251 million years ago at the end of another period that we call the Permian. In what is now Argentina about 231 million years ago. Beside that is a kind of skinny dinosaur named a Coelophysis. Its name means hollow form because they have, Coelophysis is the oldest known dinosaur from North America dinosaurs that lived in the Triassic period. It lived in what is now Argentina about 231 million years ago. 200 million years ago, the Earth encountered another mass extinction. Believed to be caused by an increased period of volcanic activity, it caused the extinction of roughly 70% of life on Earth. The big shell you see is an ammonite. Ammonites are cephalopods, that means they are relatives of the squid, octopus, and nautilus. Their spiral shells protected them from predators. Some shells got to reach sizes of six feet across or more. The animal that looks kind of like a small dolphin is an ichthyosaurus. That name means fish lizard. It's an aquatic reptile, not a mammal, so it isn't related to dolphins at all. We can't forget about the small, long-necked animal swimming with it. That's a plesiosaurus, another important part of this ecosystem. Who can name the dinosaur here covered in plates? If you said Stegosaurus, you're right. Stegosaurus is a Jurassic plant eater whose back, neck, and tail were covered in bony plates. Stegosaurus had a special weapon. Along its tail, it had a set of spikes called a thagomizer that it would use to defend itself from predators. And the predator it had to worry about the most was Allosaurus. T Rex isn't the only scary meat eating dinosaur we have here at Jurassic Quest. Allosaurus was one of the larger predators around in the late Jurassic. Allosaurus had long arms for a theropod with big hooked claws. These could help it grip onto its prey while it used its serrated teeth as its primary weapon. We know it used its arms because scientists have found signs of microscopic stress fractures on the bones of their forearms. This happens in bones when a person or an animal is using force to move heavy weight with their bodies. The big, long-necked dinosaur in this scene is a patasaurus. A patasaurus is what we call a sauropod, or a long-necked dinosaur. Sauropods were the biggest animals to ever walk on Earth. In order to get that big, sauropods had to eat all the time. To eat even more, these long-necked giants didn't even waste time chewing, but swallowed the leaves from trees whole. We're starting off in what is now England during the early Cretaceous, roughly 120 million years ago. The duck-billed dinosaur you see is what we call an iguanodon, and it's one of the first dinosaurs to be discovered and named. Some of you might have already guessed that iguanodon means iguana tooth. When iguanodon was discovered in England, no one had ever even heard of dinosaurs yet. So when it came time to name this bizarre new animal, the only similarities anyone could think of were that its teeth kind of look like the teeth of an iguana, only bigger. The animal it's next to is Baryonyx. Baryonyx was a carnivore, and specifically, it ate fish. We know that it ate fish because when the first Baryonyx skeleton was found in England in the 1980s, it had fossilized fish bones and fish scales inside of its belly. 
along with a few bones from a young Megalodon. Since it lived in what is now England, as one of its last meals was fish, this could be the earliest evidence of anyone in the UK ordering fish and chips. Our quest has now taken us from Europe to the continent of Asia, still in the early Cretaceous. The big dino you see here is Eutyrannus, the feathered tyrant. Eutyrannus is part of the Tyrannosauridae family. That means it's a relative of the T-Rex. Eutyrannus lived in the Leoning province of China. Park Ranger Marty again, and welcome to the early Cretaceous North America. The furry guy is Utah Raptor. Now let's see. Can anyone guess where Utah Raptor was discovered? That's right, Cincinnati. Just kidding, folks. Utah Raptor was found in Utah. Utah Raptor is the largest known member of the Raptor family. Now behind him is a predator named Seatz. Seatz was a massive predator that lived at the end of the early Cretaceous. In the early Cretaceous period, the dinosaur standing here is one that I bet a lot of you know. Can you guess what it is? Did you say Spinosaurus? You got it! Spinosaurus is one of the largest carnivores to ever walk the earth. Dustin, is this a secure line? Sure, uh, I think. Uh, I just turned off the mic. Yeah, they definitely can't hear us now. What's up? I just noticed that the T-Rexes aren't in their areas. <laughs> Do you know if they've been moved to another location? Hmm, I haven't heard anything about moving them anywhere. They should both be there. I can check in with Nick and Marty to see if they know anything about this. That would be great. I'll organize a search. We need to find them soon, but we cannot get our guests worried. Let's keep this on the down low. Roger that. Any other questions about these creatures or anything else you see on the tour? The tour gets to them. Or more they get to the tour. The raptor attacked a protoceratops, the next dinosaur in the sea. This is thanks to the fossil of a velociraptor and protoceratops every morning for morning. breakfast. Yet another dinosaur from Mongolia is the large Therizinosaurus you see here with the long claw. These crests would have certainly served as display structures, but may also have been used in some Lambiosaurs as resonating chambers to make sounds used to communicate effectively through the herd. Me about accidentally releasing the T-Rexes. Anyway. Welcome to the duck Bill Dynasty. The dinosaur with the long crest on the back of its head is called Parasaurolophus. Par if our missing T-Rex is here, that sound coming from one of your cars, they might be following the tour back in the direction of their cage. So perhaps we should uh, move on to the next stop. Yeah? Yeah. Quetzalcoatlus is the largest flying animal to ever take to the sky. In this scene, we have a group of dinosaurs called Ceratopsians, or horned-faced dinosaurs. The ones in this scene include Titanoceratops, Cosmoceratops, Stereachosaurus, and Brachyceratops. Now, there are two families of Ceratopsians, Chasmosaurines and Centrosaurines. Now, Chasmosaurines have two prominent eye horns above their eyes and a very large frill. Centrosaurines do not typically have prominent eye horns and tend to have smaller frills. T-Rex had very short arms, so it couldn't brush its teeth. That means its mouth was filled with bits of its last meal, filling its mouth with bacteria. 
When T-Rex went hunting, it would sometimes bite into prey that got away. If that happened, some of the bacteria from T-Rex's mouth might infect the wound, causing the prey animal to get sick. T-Rex could use its terrific sense of smell to track that prey down. Uh, let's get out of here before that other Rex picks up our scent. On to the next area, the Triceratops. Park Ranger Marty can tell you all about them. They're his favorite. Finally, here at my favorite dinosaur, the Triceratops. The cool thing about Triceratops... No! The last T-Rex is in with the Triceratops' pen, and he's eating the Triceratops! Oh no, folks, this is terrible! That's my favorite Triceratops! Lisa, we've located the missing T-Rex! Lisa, do you copy? Oh no, this is terrible! Well, since we're here, Triceratops is an herbivore from the end of the Cretaceous period. That's the same time and place that T-Rex lived. Now, Triceratops means three horn face for pretty obvious reasons. Scientists used to think that Triceratops used the frill on the back of its head to defend its neck from T-Rex. That seems like it would make a lot of sense, but there's actually evidence that when T-Rex did eat Triceratops, he would sometimes bite down on that frill and pull the Triceratops' head right off. That meant it was less of a shield and more of a pull tab on my favorite dinosaur. Thank you.